Welcome back everybody, this is Steve, KM9G, and today I'm gonna go over the 2022 ARRL Handbook for Radio Communications. And I'm only gonna go over a little tiny part because I don't have a whole lot of time to, to share with you on this massively massive set of books that have come out. And basically, if there's any question you have about amateur radio, this thing can answer it in more detail than you probably want, which may make you ask a little bit more questions. It, it Hopefully, it'll make you ask some more questions and get you excited about getting on the air and doing some things. Before me was Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course. Thank you, Josh, for uh, your part in this. And then after me is going to be The Smoking Ape, and I've got uh, other contributors here, Good Game Ham Radio and Outdoors, uh, Hayden, Ham Radio DX, Jason is Ham Radio 2.0, and Chuck KK6 USY Ham Radio Adventures. So there is a playlist in the description down below that will get you to where you need to be if you are looking at some other parts of this. My part is going to be on digital modes and specifically on FT8. Those are found in Volume 3, which is Part 2 of the two-volume set that goes over practical design and principles. So... The, the volume three covers chapters 12 through 18. Let me scroll down. Finally hit chapter 15, slow down a little bit. Here we go. Here's the section on WS, JTX, and on FT8. It's a long way down. We're on page 152. That gives you kind of an idea of just how much information there is. And this isn't even page one of section 15. This is subsection four of section 15, page six or seven. It, there's a lot of stuff here which is good because that's what you're looking for is a lot of stuff when you're looking for this. So I highlighted a couple of things in here that I wanted to talk about. And I didn't realize that WSJTX was as old as it is. It goes back to 2001. That's pretty amazing stuff right there. I didn't think it went back that far. It got started with the modes that had some really difficult paths. Those modes would have been Meteor Scatter and Earth, Moon, Earth, or Moon Bounce. And it helped automate a lot of the, the actual radio work, which let you focus on some of the harder stuff like getting your antenna set up properly and your tracking systems and your time of day that you're gonna make your contact and getting all of your radio parameters in the right settings and all that jazz and took out the, the mundane stuff of exchanging the QTH and exchanging the call sign and that kind of thing. From there, it developed into a whole bunch of other stuff. There's fast modes, there's slow modes. We'll talk about what those are as we get to them. And it incorporated error correction Again, we're on subsection four of chapter 15. There's a couple of pages on error correction that are really super interesting as to how the different kinds of error correction work. It goes into the encoding, talks about how false decodes are rare, which I can 100% agree with. When I'm doing my FT8 work, the only time I've ever seen a quote unquote false decode is when I've changed bands. The transmissions have a fixed duration and their start times are synchronized with UTC. This is why your clock needs to be accurate because everybody's looking at a very specific time window for a very specific part of the communication. And that's part of the magic here. This is why the weak signal stuff works is because we're sending exactly the right information. We're expecting that information to follow an exact specific kind of format. It's got error correction built in so we can kind of fix some signal fading or the bands going away or QRM or whatever the case may be because we know enough about what we're expecting to receive and it happens at a very specific time frame if I didn't already say that. So like a lot of the heavy lifting is taken care of because of the, the protocol that you're working with. You know, like the protocol is first I'm going to send my call sign and then I'm going to send my grid square and then I'm going to send a very specific sequence to turn it over to you. At which point you're going to say these specific words. And because I'm expecting you to return those specific words and you're expecting me to say those specific words, magic happens. And that's really interesting and has really led to a lot of communications being made at the bottom of the solar cycle. We just came out of the, the end of the last solar cycle. And we're getting into the beginning of the next solar cycle. It's starting to look a little bit better. But this is pretty cool because I can make contacts that I would not have been able to make. And if I got into ham radio at the top of the solar cycle and came to the bottom and didn't have something like this, it would be kind of a lull in my ham radio hobby. And if I came in at the bottom and didn't have something like this, it probably would have been the end of my ham radio hobby because I can't make any contacts that are worth making. It's like really difficult. So this solves some of those problems. Basic aim is to compress the most common message formats used for minimal contacts into fixed length packets. And that's actually super 
high level summary of what's going on. Let me give you an example in this pink section here. A standard amateur call sign consists of one or two character prefix, at least one which must be a letter, followed by a decimal digit and a suffix of one to three letters. Within these rules, the number of possible call signs is equal to 37 times 36 times 10 times 27 times 27 times 27, or somewhat over 262 million. The numbers 27 and 37 arise because in the first and last three positions, a character may be absent or a letter or perhaps a digit. And so now that we've got the subset of what we need to transmit figured out, now we can figure out how to fit that into a computer frame, a computer format. And two to the 28th power is more than 268 million. So 268 million is certainly enough data space to hold 262 million pieces of information, possibilities of information. So it goes on to say 28 bits are enough to encode any standard call sign uniquely. And that's accurate, that's, that's true. But somebody went through and put that thought in and they did the same thought for the Maidenhead grid square and they did the same thought for some of the special components. So in the Maidenhead grid square, as an example, that's been encoded into 15 bits worth of information and there's a little bit of room left over for the CQ, the DE, the QRZ, the, the K, the RR, the RR73, the different things that you do to signify the next step in the communication has occurred or should occur is added into the tail end of that 15 bits because there's room there. So you're looking at 28 bits plus 15 bits plus a couple here and there. And I, it says somewhere in here the total number of bits of the communication that goes on. Inside of WSJTX, you have a couple of different protocols, the first of which are the slow modes, which are FST4, FST4W, FT4, FT8, JT4, JT9, JT65, Q65, and WSPR, or Whisper. And each of those has its own special sauce as to why it's important. FT4 was designed to be a quick contest exchange. It's seven and a half seconds per volley. FT8 was the original thought process here, and it's 15 seconds per volley. Whisper is designed for um, signal propagation testing, antenna testing, that kind of thing. And it's a very long transmission that goes through. I want to say Whisper is two minutes off the top of my head, but it's in the book. So I don't need to go off the top of my head. I can go look it up when we get to that section. Because FT8 is so popular, it has its own section. FT8 came out in early summer of 2017. It's since taken the amateur radio world by force, and it's the largest number of QSOs that are recorded every single month for the past so many months compared to other modes. So it's extremely popular. The terse message exchanges of call signs, locator signal reports, and acknowledgements serve well for those engaged in country counting, award chasing, and the like. So as a result of having this ability to reliably transmit this data and having people be excited about using this mode, there's now a lot of people on there. So I can tell if my radio is working and my antenna is working and my computer is working just by tuning to 7074, the 40 meter FT8 frequency, and there's almost always signals there. If there aren't signals there, I've either got something wrong in my setup or, um, the band is closed and there aren't going to be any signals there. Or, you know, there's some major cataclysm that happened and the world's just gone. For some reason, I can still turn my radio on and not hear anything. But barring those weird things, there's going to be signals there, which is really cool about that. And because there are signals there, now I can do things like chase grid squares where I never could before. And I can work the entire globe and I can mark these things off a lot quicker and make something like that a reality, you know, Chasing grid squares before when you were doing it just on voice contacts with the random happenstance that somebody happened to be listening at an unscheduled time would have taken a ridiculously long amount of time compared to chasing grid squares where you can probably work the whole globe in a couple of months, to be honest with you. You can certainly work all states in a weekend if you tried hard enough. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. Ah, oh, there it is. 77 bits of information and then a 14-bit cyclic redundancy check. So that's the size of that. Then we come in here and it talks a little bit about the encapsulation, the encoding of the message. FT8 modulation uses Gaussian filtered eight tone FSK, eight dash GFSK for short, at 6.25 baud, accomplishes frame synchronization with three seven by seven Costas arrays. There's a lot of stuff to unpack in there. This book does go back 
previously in the chapter and totally unpack what FSK is and what BOD is. And I haven't gotten to the part yet where it talks about Costas arrays, but I'm looking for that. I would assume that that's named after Mr. Costas or Mrs. Costas who invented the seven by seven array format. So that should be in this book somewhere. I'm, there's a lot of book to cover and not a lot of time for me to tell you about how awesome it is. FT8 also has a de-expedition mode called Fox and Hound mode. And I didn't know what this was. And now that I've read this portion of the chapter, I know that Fox and Hound mode allows for the Fox to transmit multiple responses at the same time back. Your normal FT8 exchange is me talking to you and only me talking to you and only you talking to me. In Fox and Hound mode, there could be lots of yous and one of me, and I'm talking to lots of yous all at the same time. So that kind of explains what's going on there. And it is it does take a little bit of a toll on the um the the pass band in the signal because now we've got some harmonics and intermod and bleeding over and other characteristics that happen when you do something like that, but it certainly makes the de-expedition work a little bit better over. There's a nice table here on the parameters of the different types of structured modes that we have, the slow modes and the fast modes. And you can see each one of them is just a little tiny bit different as you look through the chart. And then there is a visual representation of what the different signals look like on a spectrum analyzer and what they would look like on your waterfall display. That's pretty neat. And it goes into FT4, goes into all of the different slow modes. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So it's whisper is two minute TR sequences, two minute transmit and receive sequences. So I'm guessing one minute per side. And then we get into the fast modes. Fast modes are JT9 fast, MSK 144. I think that's it. Okay, no, there's just a couple of different kinds of JT9. JT9 E, F, G, and H, and then MSK. 144. So that's why there's only showing two because one of them is a grouping of more than one. If you want to get a copy of this volume or a copy of the entire six volume set, there will be a link in the description down below where you can pick that up. Coming up next is the Smoke and Ape with his part of this series. And there's a link to the playlist down below so that you can find out what his video is all about. Thanks for being awesome.